Hi guys, welcome back. I'm cutting a piece of metal to make our insert for our number plate to fit in. And whenever you do big cuts on an old guillotine like this, sometimes the sheet will walk a little bit and you wind up with one end a little bit narrower or wider than the other. So I tend to clamp my sheets to the table when I want them to be accurate. So I'll just nip that down now and we'll chop him off. And that'll at least get both our top and bottom sides in nice long straight lines together, parallel. I'm going to interrupt right now and talk about the video we're watching. Now, in this video, I build this panel and this is the piece of sheet we're marking out at the start of the video. This is the one we have success with, but I went a different road to what I normally would do. And it was mainly to present options for you guys at home who haven't got a shed full of equipment to show you how you could do this easily. So I did something in a way that I wouldn't normally do it. And we got halfway through and things went a little bit silly and got a bit ordinary and there is a dummy spit in there. Robbie's not that happy with how the progress is going. So stay tuned and watch and you'll see how I get through my dilemmas and we wind up with this perfect panel. These little off cuts are just so I don't scratch the sheet up with the edge of the clamp plates. Yesterday I made a couple of little test pieces to actually get our dimensions right for our insert tray. And I've come up with this one. So it's 170 mils for this area here, 50 for the top and 40 from the bottom. And when we hook that in there, we've actually got the number plate standing up pretty well. So that'll work for us. We've got enough room on the reinforcing and on the latch mechanism that nothing's going to hit when we put the number plate a little bit further back in the car. So we'll go with making it to that size. And we've just got to basically build a tray. But what I want to do is put the opening in it for the number plate recess. And I've just checked on the press brake a minute ago. I've got just enough room because what we're going to wind up with is two folds, basically right next to each other where I've got that hole for the number plate to go in the middle of it. And I've got just enough room on the V block on the press brake to be able to slide it in to be able to get the second fold afterwards. Now, if I folded the pan up to fit in here as the first step and got that fitting into the hole and then cut and formed the opening around here, I'd be doing it all by hand and I wouldn't be able to lay it flat on my little steel bench over there and work the sides to get a nice crisp little corner fold all the way around there. So I'd really prefer to get the piece formed for the number plate to start with and then fold the sides after that. And the reality is, is there's only four folds to do. It's a pretty simple box to make. We'll mark out our piece of metal and we'll cut a hole in the middle of it and we'll start forming it. I always like to decide that one edge of my sheet is the top to start with and that way whenever I come back to make measurements and things like that I can always reference it back to that point and also if you put it down and leave it for a week or so and you come back to it you're not sort of thinking now hmm did I measure it this way or that way so pretty easy to just draw a couple of arrows on it facing upwards and we've got that I'm going to allow myself a five millimeter excess trim so we'll come at 45 mil from the bottom of the sheet and we can mark our bottom fold. And at this stage, all I want to do is work out where my number plate's going to go on the panel. So basically it's going to be centered between our folds. And so we just need enough information on the sheet to work that out. And we've got 170. So that would make it better look on the right side of the square. 200 and... 15. 15 and we have got 170, it all works.
Okay, so that's the middle there. I'll just grab one of our forming plates because that's what I'm going to actually make the hole to. So what I want to do is actually form this opening up and get it so that that plate we made to do the hammer form with the other day is going to be tight in the hole. And that way we know when we come to put it together. So if we bend this up or bend it back the other way, we want these two to actually butt together and then it's going to be an easy weld to just run around here and join our two pieces together and we should have next to no distortion with it and it'll be an easy build. So grab me plate, we'll mark it out. So I think from memory that was 150. Look at that, it is. And it is 410 the other way. We got the 45, we want 55, don't we? Right. That looks better. Okay. Now that's our fold line. So if we're going to build up, fold up, I'd say 10 millimeters. So if we go 65 up from the bottom. Now we're not going to have a 20 mil deep recess, but I want to have enough material there that I can trim it and play with it. And we'll come up with something that just looks good from that point. So that will be another 130. 65. Now the trick is always measure from one side of the sheet. Because if we've got any slight discrepancy and it's a millimetre different to there from one end to the other and you start working from both sides of the sheet well you're going to be marking out on angles rather than keeping things parallel. By working from one side of the sheet, it doesn't really matter much, it's always going to be parallel. And we've allowed ourselves a five millimetre waste, so we've got room there to throw it away. Okay, and for that. So that's a cut line to there. Just marked in onto the line I'm going to cut. So there's going to be no way of mistakenly cutting the wrong line.
I like to get rid of all this swarf as I go because it just picks up everywhere. If you wipe your hand across something, it's gonna cut you and things like that. So I've always just been in the practice if I do a bit of work like this, I will stop and clean up my area before I move on. Just bear with me for a minute. Yeah, we could get this out with the angle grinder first and make it a bit easier. Uh, in fact, I might do that. Once you snip stuff, it tends to got to curl up to come out. If you cut it and just leave a little bit of waste around there, at least you wind up with a flat off cut you can use for something else. So just rip it over the other bench and chop the guts out. Voila. I like to deburr my sheet straight away just to get rid of that sharp edge that could cut me. And always remember to run your disc off your sheet of metal rather than onto your sheet of metal because the edge could catch in there and tear the disc and spit it out at you and hurt you. It's only got a burr on one side. Oh. The burr is on the back all the time. I didn't know that. Leave it in the video. I think I've got enough material there. I can just go to a square corner on the inside cut and we'll worry about it later. Might have put a little bit of weld in there to fill it when we form it, but it's not going to be by much, so it doesn't really matter that much. Now, green handles and red handles. Red handle will cut to the left hand side of the line. The green ones will cut to the right side of the line. So when you're cutting out inside pieces like this, you really need both. And this pair of snips, well, both these snips, are just about worn out. They're not cutting as well as they need to be. So we're nearly due for another pair of tin snips. I usually get about a year out of them. And, um, yeah, the trouble I get with worn snips is not that they won't cut, that's just what I was having there a minute ago, was it just has a trouble getting started on a slight taper on a curve, and they tend to want to just keep walking out or walking off. And there's little serrations on the top originally that grip the sheet. Well, they're pretty much worn out on these in the area where you want to start cutting each time. So anyway, you get that, everything wears out. Here's our little foose folder that I made for doing the opening in the tailgate. And I've just cut another notch in it. And this one looks about 10 millimetres deep, so I'm hoping it is. And um, I'm going to use it to see if we can just form that inside opening up with it. Okay, we're not near anywhere near deep enough. So there's our line out there. So that's, we know that's our fold line. So. We could hammer form this in a heap of ways. We could actually clamp some pieces of metal to it in the vise and we could just roll it across them, get that nice along there, do each side as an individual. We could make up a formal with some plates welded together to do the corners and everything all in one go. But for what we've got to do today, I think one of these will just work its way around there. It's easy, it's quick, and uh, we don't have to make anything special for it. So I'll cut the notch a bit deeper and then we'll start folding him up. Good, we might just go a little bit more because once we tip that piece of metal around, we've got the thickness of the metal is going to poke back the other way. So the edge of it's right on the line. So we'll just go basically the thickness of the line again. 
and it should all work. Look at that, bang on the money. All right, let's start bending him. Corner's a bit tricky, not wanting to play the game. Come on, where are you? No, wrong slot. That one there's the one we want. Yeah, for a lot of years I just used a pair of vice grips to do this job and it does work very, very well. And one day I was watching a Chip Foose video and he had to fold the corner of a piece of grill in to put a different light into it. And he just grabbed a little piece of flat bar and cut a notch in it. And that worked an absolute treat because the notch gives you the depth gauge to work. And I thought, wow, that's even better than my idea. So I started making my own and I call them Foose Folders and it's spelled F-O-L-D-R, okay? And um, so that's where the name comes from. But whatever you use, vice scripts or whatever, it's all gonna work the same, as long as you just follow, follow that line and have a little bit of patience. Don't expect it to fold over in your first pass. We don't want to be stretching this edge. It's handy. We don't want to be stretching this edge as we're going. So if we take one piece and fold it at right angles, the metal either side of it's going to stretch. If we just keep tipping it a little bit at a time, we keep that stretch to a minimum and we keep our sheet looking nice. Now the corners are going to need the most stretch of all. So we're going to have to hammer them. We might even cut into them too and just weld the difference up because what we're making the corners are going to be easy to fill with weld so it's not going to matter if we notch the corner now, as our bit of metal takes shape it's going to stiffen it up but you notice we're getting this curl in it and that's because we've stretched that edge as we're forming it but we'll do another couple of passes and then we'll straighten that out and shrink that edge down all sort of to be expected at this stage.
Not entirely certain how well this plan was thought out. Thinking we're getting a big crash and burn. We're history. It's no good. The plan didn't work. Why? Hey, because we've mashed up all the metal around the edge. The hole's not big enough for the piece of plate for a starting point. And um, we're just bruising the crap out of it. It's not going to be salvageable. I'm putting a lot of dents in here that I won't be able to do anything with. And that's the trouble. We need a rethink. might try something different. Just had a little stop and a rethink. It wasn't actually doing what I was wanting it to do. And I was winding up bruising these side pieces a little bit. Now, the top and bottom of the plate recess don't really matter that much because there's only a little thin strip of metal there and it's gonna be very easy to finish it, even with a few ripples in it and things like that. But the sides, they'll need a bit of work if I do too much damage there. But I've laid it up the other way, well, I've got it still the same way up, but what I'm gonna do is just flare these edges out with a hammer and dolly, which is probably where I should have gone in the first place. And I can firm this up by hammering down on these to crisp these corners up. But once I get it flared out enough that I can press that plate inside it, then we can still use that plate as a hammer form and work around the outsides to get back to a crisp finish. So it doesn't always work with sheet metal. Sometimes you've got to stop and have a little bit of a think and a reset, but um, hopefully we're heading in the right direction. But if we're a crash and burn, it's only another piece of metal. I'll just go and chop a piece off and we'll start it with a different method from the word go. Just a bit frustrating.
Right, we've got a bit of a fail in these two corners here, and I knew that while I was hammering it, because it's actually pinched the sheet down a bit. So I need to open these up a bit with a hammer and dolly, or just a hammer, and then get the plates back into it. But it's looking like we should be able to save this. Right, that's just rolled that corner out a bit. I've wound up with a bit of a bulge on the side here, but that doesn't matter at this stage. I can just bring him down a little bit. That drops through now, so we shall be able to put it back together, clamp it around the edge, and then work this edge all the way in tight, all the way around to crisp that line. Just made myself a bit of a former to crisp this corner up in here and I'll work my way around with it. So I've just ground the sharp edge off a gasket scraper and I've got a little bit of a radius on the corner there but it's not much, it's just a tiny little one. And that'll just tighten that corner up all the way around. I could do this in the pull max but this is an easy way that someone else could duplicate it at home. So we'll just persevere with this and we'll see if we can get a good result. Okay, that looks pretty good.
Okay, that's not too bad. Now, given I was ready to throw this away a little while ago, I'm pretty happy with that. Got a few little bits and pieces that are lumpy and bumpy and things like that, a few bruises and things, but the overall scheme of things, it's all going to work. Well, just sit it over the top for now, but that's basically what we're after. So we'll trim them back. I'm thinking we're only going to have about a 10 millimetre recess in there, so each of those plates is 5 millimetres thick. We can sit one into the base piece, grind around it to make it flat. We can put the other plate on the anvil, put this up on top this way around, grind all the way around the edge, have 5 millimetre lip then, sit them together, glue them together, and we've got it. Easy, isn't it? Talk to you soon, stay safe.